So now we are going to start with true false not given questions in the reading test in IELTS. As you all know, the time for the reading is 60 minutes and you have 40 questions. You have about 13 questions in each passage and in one passage you will have 14 questions. You have three sections in the, in the general reading paper. It is the first text is a factual information with two or three small factual texts. In section two, uh, this could be on hotel advertisements, etc. Section two will be a discursive uh, topic with factual texts, mostly related to work and employment. For example, applying for a job and companies, policies, etc. And section three will be more analytical and the topic will be of general interest. This is how a general training uh, paper would look. For an academic reading test paper, you will have three long passages. It will not be broken down into uh, smaller sections. You will not have smaller articles within one section. And academic reading papers, it would be written as reading passage one, reading passage two, and reading passage three. Are the slides moving? Can you see the next slide? Do not write on the question paper. Is that seen visible? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is some general information about reading, which you already know. So let's go straight away to the true, false, not given questions. <clears throat> so for true, false, not given questions, you will be presented with a list of facts. So that is why the question is either it's true or false or not given. Whereas if it is yes, no, not given, the question would be depending on the opinion of the writer. If the writer thinks it's yes, then you have to write yes. And if the writer thinks it's not, it is not a fact, then you write no. Otherwise, you write not given. But these are all factual texts. You have to look at the order. The, you have to look at the text in order to decide if these facts are either true or false or they're not given. Now, these are very simple tips. You have to just remember these, keep these in mind. If the text agrees with or confirms the information in the statement, then the answer is true. So if you see the meaning of the entire question sentence, I'm saying entire question sentence. So you have to understand the meaning of the entire question sentence. If the meaning is the same, it agrees with that in the passage or it confirms the information in the passage or it is in line with the, the information in the passage, then you have to mark it as true. But if the text contradicts or is opposite to the information in the statement, then the answer is false. So suppose the statement, the entire statement or the meaning of the sentence is opposite in the, in the passage. So it is contradicting. It is there, but it is giving the opposite meaning. It's just contrary. In that case, you mark it as false or no. If it's yes, no, not given, you have to mark it no. If it's true, false, not given, you mark it false. But the third point is, if there is no information or it is impossible to know, then the answer would be not given. So here, sometimes the entire information is not in the text. So you have to write not given. But sometimes they would give partial information in the question and that information would not suffice to answer whether it's true or false because the entire information is not in the text. They are giving only partial information. Either there is some information which is in the question, which is in the in the passage, but you cannot say true. If you write if you write true, it would be wrong. If you write false, it would also be wrong. In that case, it would be not given. So either the entire information of the question sentence is not present, or there's only partial information. You don't have sufficient data to say whether it's true or false or yes or no. In that case, you have to write not given. You have to make uh, sure that you do not match only some words of the question or some words of those which are in the text. That is called spot matching. If you take a few words or one or two words which are in the question sentence and you find that same word or phrase in the passage, you should not immediately mark it as true or false. 
because that answer may not be from that portion of the passage. That is given as a distractor to make us think that the answer is there, whereas the answer will not be there. The answer will be from some other paragraph. So you need to relate to the meaning of the entire sentence. What does the entire sentence talk about? You have to find three or four words or facts in the question sentence, which will pertain to the passage. So only when you see the entire information is matching, then you write it as true. And if it is opposite meaning, you mark it as false. If nothing is given about it or only partial information is given, then you mark it as not given. Okay. Now, the next point here says, use the right code. The code is the answer, the way you answer. If the question is yes, no, not given, you have to write yes, no, not given. And if the question asks true, false, not given, the answer should be written as true, false, not given. And also, please don't write short forms like TF and NG. You have to write the full word. As you know, for reading, you have to write all the answers only once in your OMR sheet. And you should write all in capital letters with the pencil so that the letters are clear. Uh, two weeks ago, somebody did the exam and uh, scored 5.5 in reading. And he told me that his handwriting would not have been clear. And I, I asked him, didn't he write in capital letters? He said, no. Uh, he didn't know that he should write all in cap letters. So he wrote in small letters and his handwriting was not clear. So because of that, some answers might have been marked wrong. The letters were all sticking next to each other. The A's, uh, the, A, the O looked like A and he said, that's the way I write O. And he's joining O to the next word. O and D comes next to that. There's a line at the bottom which joins the D. Whereas if you join the line at the bottom, it becomes an A and not an O. So because of these letter formation, you have to write all in cap letters. Don't write in small letters because there can be confusions and you will uh, lose marks due to spelling errors. So please make sure in your OMR sheet, you write all your answers in capital letters and please use a dark pencil because the listening and reading sheets are going to be scanned. So if it is too light, you write with a light pencil, the, the image cannot get captured. So please make sure you use a nice dark 2 HP pencil. So I've, I've told you this, do not use short forms. If you use short forms, you'll be marked zero. And if you even change the code, you'll be marked zero. So like this, you'll have four to seven combination questions given in a test paper. And the reading passage on the IELTS test is giving factual information about the topic. <clears throat> the question will be true, false, or not given. If it's in the opinion of the writer, it will ask you to write yes, no, or not given. Let's look at some strategies here. You have to do skimming. Skimming means speed reading or fast reading. Then you have scanning. Scan is to look for details, uh, for minor pieces of information and specific details. Read in detail. Now, for skimming, you have to read quickly and understand what the context is all about. Read the first and the last lines of the paragraphs. Identify the nouns, verbs, and adjectives. So identify what are the naming words, what are the action words, what are the descriptive words, which are nouns, verbs, and adjectives. Also, you question the sentence of um, the question sentence of true, false, not given. Ask yourself, who is this talking about? The sentence is talking about a subject. Is that subject a person? Who is it? Or what is it about? It's a place or a thing. Where is this located? In which place? What is the setting? When did this happen? When? Time duration. And why? What is the purpose? What is the reason? So you ask yourself these questions in the question sentence and underline the keywords. So that is very important. And you underline it helps you to focus. Now you have skimmed through the questions and the passage. Now you have to do scanning. Scanning is to look for specific information. Search and find specific text. Check what the writer's opinions are. What is the purpose? That is answering why. Look for keywords like dates, numbers. Look for names of people, names of places, names of events. Something that happened, when it happened, the dates, the figures, maybe some statistics, maybe some Percentages are given, maybe some proportions are given. You need to note all that, underline those keywords. Look for vocabulary clues. Uh, that means you may get you know, one word in the question sentence, but a different word in the passage. 
look up for the meaning of those new words look for synonyms and rephrase sentence in the question sentence you will get the maybe subject first and object later but in the passage they will rephrase the quest, the the sentence you may have the object first and then the subject so they rephrase the sentences sometimes in the passage you may have active voice but in the question sentence it may be put in passive voice form but the meaning is absolutely the same you need to read it and understand and infer that the meaning is the same so your answer is from that portion of the passage also look for controlling words like only all never sometimes these are controlling words because though they seem to be insignificant parts of speech in the sentence these words change the meaning of the entire sentence when you say only something it means there's only one only that one now say all that means it covers everything never means not at all so these words have to be considered and you have to underline them as you are reading the question either in the passage or in the question sentence you may get controlling words like this which may be very small but that could be the turning point in your answer that is the word which may determine whether it's true or it is false or whether it's not given also now on the right side you see read in detail infer the meaning infer the meaning from the passage infer means to understand by uh, reading the context sometimes even the same words are not given but you are inferring the meaning that means you are understanding the meaning from what you read within that given situation or the context and find the extended or supporting ideas uh, sometimes you may write an answer as true but in the next sentence in the passage they may change the meaning they may say however and then the answer would be false so you need to read one or two sentences before and after the sentence where the actual content is given so this is very important in terms of time management read for not more than 3 to 4 minutes so the entire section suppose you get a uh, three filler three questions for yes no not given don't spend more than 4 minutes on this question you should not be doing too much of uh, in depth reading for this you have to understand the point but you have to be very fast because the other questions will suffer and will not have enough time <clears throat> let's look at the sample question here for true false not given the statement the question is chilies originate in south america and have been eaten for at least 9500 years here the example um, it's an example of true false not given the first question says chilies come from south america the answer is true why is it true can anyone say why this answer is true from this above statement here so originate originate in south america yes sir can you be a little louder please uh, i say it's uh, it's mentioned here it is a originate correct it is given originate so you yeah. see the word originate but in the yeah. question is there the word originate no what does it say come from come so from, come yeah. from is a phrase which means originate right so they are parallel expressions which mean the same it originates it comes from from south america so the answer is true the second sentence says people began eating chilies in the last few centuries the answer is false somebody else will say why the answer is false here from the statement because it has given like they have been eating it for at least uh, 9500 years it's not few centuries Yeah. Very good, Sonia. Yes. And what does century mean? Century is this one. Hundred years. Hundred. Very mm -hmm. good. Correct, Sonia. So here in the in the sentence statement, they are saying they have been eaten for at least least means minimum. Minimum is how much? Nine thousand five hundred. But here in the sentence question, they are saying people began least eating least. century in the last few century. Last few centuries means in the last few hundred years. But minimum is nine thousand five hundred. so it's way beyond so there is something given about it but the meaning is opposite it is not true right so it is false so you can't say true you can't say not given it is false they are given when they started eating the chilies but it's much much more than hundreds it's in thousands so the answer is false the third sentence says south americans were the first people to start eating chilies 
the answer is not given why is it not given can somebody answer this they never mention anything very good then they didn't mention they didn't mention anywhere in this sentence that south americans were the first people they're saying that the chilies originated there then they are also saying since how long but they're not saying that those people were the first people to start eating chilies okay now if you see on the left side the explanation for the third one this information is not in the text it is quite probable that south americans began eating chilies first because they originated there but you can't be sure of that and the text does not tell you that so in the text you can't assume you can infer the meaning infer doesn't mean uh, you guess whatever is given you have to understand that and inferring means understanding from context but <clears throat> if you assume something which is not there then you will get a wrong answer so we cannot assume that because chili is originated in south america that they were the first people we cannot substantiate our answer true or false so you have to give not given there is no information about that it is not mentioned anywhere okay so yeah the explanations are given on the side one and two you have already said correctly and this third explanation so please take care of this false and not given if there is something about that sentence and it is in the opposite meaning then you mark it as false but if there is something partially given and the entire information is not in the passage if if you can if you say yes or true it seems to be wrong if you say false is also you can't uh, you can't give evidence for it then you can be sure that the answer is not given okay and do not assume anything from what is not there but you can infer the text and give your answers from inference okay let's look at another example which is quest for beauty now this passage says by skin bleaching is a long standing cosmetic staple across sudan a new craze is sweeping the nation many young women are turning to prescription pills in order to gain weight and hopefully gain the curvaceous figures they see as the standard of beauty now this is the portion you have to focus on away from the regulation of trained pharmacists fattening pills are illegally dispensed by the same small shops which sell topical bleaching creams and other popular beauty fixes sold individually in small bags and emptied sweet containers they are completely devoid of any information about medical risks do you understood this passage now let's look at the questions first question people do not get any information about the dangers to their health when they purchase unregulated weight gain pills now you all see the passage and tell me whether this is true or false or not given yeah it is not mentioned here uh, yeah it is false yes sir it is true it was it's true true sarat the same true what about the others true ma'am true true faraz also true. saying true okay what do the others say parmesh what do you say true true ma'am true why parmesh tell me why do you think it's true because uh, danger to their health it is written ma'am here you can see second line danger to their health when they purchase unregulated weight gain pills here it is written in regulation is there ma'am now can you be little louder what did you say second line in question it is written uh, danger of their health when they purchase the unregulated weight gain pills yes ma'am so uh, here we can see young women are training weight gain hope always regulation trend i i think last line ma'am so what are the synonyms here what are the parallel expressions which mean the same thing people do not get any information here where does it say do not get information in which word last line devoid of any information about medical risk yeah, last, yeah. Line, last, line. last line last line yes yeah. they are completely devoid, devoid of any yeah. information devoid yeah. of means they don't have they are devoid they are empty they do not have any information about medical risks yeah they say they do not get any information about the dangers to their health so do not get is devoid they are completely devoid they are completely devoid of any information but you see information is a keyword here which matches 
about what about their dangers to their health here what do they say in the passage not saying dangers but they saying about medical risks medical risks are the dangers to their health so that's a parallel expression right when they buy unregulated weight gain pills what are unregulated here in this Oil passage away from the regulation of train pharmacists away from means unregulated opposite of regulation is unregulated so there are three points here which you can match here one is devoid of any information is not getting information and dangers to health is a risk of me medical risk and purchase so here they write about purchasing buying and they talk about unregulated weight gain pills here they say regulation of pha train pharmacies fattening pills so here they say fattening here they say weight weight gain pills is again a common word so you have four points which are talking about this uh, sentence in this part of the paragraph so the answer is true right good so you see a lot of parallel expressions are used synonyms are used but there are also the things that you can relate to and match up with the paragraph so the answer here is true and the explanation is on the side here what we just discussed <laughs> Okay, let's move to the next slide. Here are some common. So, did you understand this about the true false not given? How to address the question? How to look for what to ask in your mind? Is it the same in meaning? Is it how, how will mark it this one man? Away from 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 away and till up to medical risk, right? You mark mark right, underline. It. So, how how will do that? Which one? From marking. Just, just a minute, just a minute, Sharad. One minute. I can't hear you. Uh, let me see if I can increase this volume. Volume is very low. You can able to hear me now. One minute, one minute. Please wait. Okay. Yes, please tell me, Sarath. Um, it's marked here, right? Underlined from away from away from the regulation of train pharmacies to till up to medical risk, right? So, so how we are doing this one? Marking. Okay. Means the lining, right? Yes, Sharad, if you don't mind, please repeat your question. Uh, Ma'am, this uh, the marking right from away from away from the regulation of train pharmacist till up to medical risk, right? So it's yes. already marked here, right? Yes. So uh, how will you identify that is the okay. right passage to mark? Okay. So you have to. Uh, this this is marked by us to explain the answer, but in the question paper you will not have Post this underlined, right? Correct. So that's yeah. your question. Yeah. So you have to. Read when they are talking about the weight gain pills. You have to read this passage. You have to read. I told you in the previous uh, slide that you have to do skimming first. When you skim, you run through the entire passage, and you have to identify any words which are keywords which you can relate to the question. So you see weight gain pills. You can see pills are also talked about in the paragraph in this line. So the answer is not from the top, right? It's not from here. Here they talk about skin bleaching. They talk about cosmetics. They talk about um, other things. From where they talk about weight gain from here. Many young women are turning to prescription pills. So the sentence starts from here in order to gain weight. So weight is also here 
weight is also here so you know that the answer is somewhere from this portion so you start reading from here quickly till the end of the paragraph and when you keep reading you have to look up now always read the question first charat and all of you you have to read the question sentences first so that you can easily identify where the answer comes in the passage so always read the question first not just for true false not given for any kind of question if you read the question first and the questions are at the back of your mind you read the passage you will identify where the answers come from so you have to read this quickly and then understand where they talk about regulation here they talk about unregulated so you get a clue there so you can i underline this word regulation of train pumps the question also underline unregulated weight gain pills so they talk about away from regulation fat gaining uh, fattening pills are illegally dispensed dispensed what they selling the dispense is selling yeah they saying purchasing the purchasing the people are selling pharmacists are selling but um, women especially young women who want to stay slim they want to purchase so they are the purchasers so you underline this word purchase you underline dispense by small shops then uh, then you read this quickly and you talk of they talk about skin bleaching creams and popular beauty fixes then you see here again it says sold individually in small bags what are sold these these pills fattening pills are sold then you come to the point that they are completely devoid of any information about medical risk so how you come to this point is sharat first of all read the question underline the keywords underline people no do not get information dangers to health such as unregulated weight gain pills okay so all these are keywords now when you go back to the passage and start reading with your pencil keep underlining wherever you see anything so start from here in fact you will be underlining this also prescription pills to gain weight then uh, standard of beauty regulation dispense fattening pills illegally dispensed right so they're not legal so people are uh, not get, getting it like in a straight way they get it on the hand and then we sell topical bleaching creams and when you read this entire passage you will note that a lot of the information what's asked in the question comes from this portion of the passage okay sharat it will just come by underlining keywords and identify spot you which part of the paragraph talks more about this question then you will be able to identify the answer this comes a lot with reading practice you have to read uh, uh, apart from this read a lot of other books newspapers and inferring meaning understanding the sentences using synonyms using parallel expressions you will be able to identify these words okay yeah yeah next is the common problems that people find uh, a face while answering this question common problems are not being able to paraphrase you should be able to uh, make or you make it a habit to paraphrase the question paraphrase means put it in your own words understand the sentence question and put it in your own words okay write it in your uh, have a, have the meaning the context of the sentence in your own understanding put it in your own language understand it in your way and then matching words instead of meaning is also a common problem this is called spot matching where we see one word and then we find that one word somewhere in the passage but the answer will not be from that portion of the passage the entire meaning of the sentence will be there in another portion of the paragraph you have to look at the entire meaning and not just match one single word in terms of the entire meaning of the sentence so don't do spot matching match the meaning of the entire sentence the third problem is identifying keywords so you saw in the in the example first example where they talked about the chilies you also saw keywords in the fattening pills you also saw keywords which are matching from the question to the paragraph so you have to identify those keywords and keep underlining them in a, uh, in order to get your answer fast and finding the difference between not given and false 
not given is there's nothing about that particular piece of information there's nothing in the paragraph or there is some information that information is not enough to say that it's true or to prove whether it's false or to say whether it's not given you can't say there's only some information the entire inf- information is not there so it could be true it could be false you cannot say it's true we cannot say it's false it can be either of them so the uh, the answer is not given so that particular information the entire sentence meaning is not given in the passage if it is directly opposite if there is something but it's opposite then it is false then taking too much time on one question we saw on the slide that it is better to take not more than 3 to 4 minutes on this entire question type don't spend more than maybe 4 to 5 minutes maximum finish the true uh, true false not given question types otherwise the other questions will suffer and many people say they will not able to finish 40 questions in one hour that's because of this problem spending too much time on this particular question type let's look at the next slide these are some common tips again read read the question or statement so sharat here's what i was telling you about read the question or the statement first read this first then go to the passage and skim the passage skim is go through very quickly if you don't get the answer very quickly when you're skimming then you read the rest of the portion and go for the details and look for the details then you understand understand focus on the overall meaning of the question sentence and understand ideas not just individual words like i told you don't match specific words or one random word given in the question and that word is somewhere in the passage but the entire meaning is totally something different so uh, that will also mislead you or misguide you as give it that's a distractor don't get distracted and under, understand the entire idea of the sentence and not individual words and identify the keywords see the difference between the words and the question and the words in the passage look for synonyms look for signifying verbs verbs are action words words are the words which give uh, which denote action look for what is happening what is the action here and see if the same thing is also given in the text there are oh, some general oh, oh, tips one, for reading yeah wait, one, one minute ma'am i just forgot to take the snap just go back yes yeah no you can okay tell me move on yeah yeah all right so here are some general tips for reading it is not just for true false not given but general tips and techniques to make you help you read faster and complete all your questions the 40 questions and complete them within one hour here so there are images where this shows that you know you have to read voraciously and also you have to see different color um covers of the book are of different colors that represents different subjects or topics so read on a variety of topics don't just read what you like or what you're comfortable reading or just what you already know also venture into subjects and topics which you don't know about which are difficult for you which you find challenging because if you know something about the topic it helps you to understand faster rather than reading a paragraph or passage which is totally strange to you so reading on various topics helps you Not only in reading, it also helps you in your essay writing because, as you know, you get essays, topics on various subjects. It's not just your profession because it's a global test. You can get topics from any subject, so it's always good to have information on different subjects. And ma'am, last time you know in uh, classes, so some passages are very complex, so it's very difficult to read okay. passage and uh, get the okay. idea. Okay, so today what we'll do is after this we'll be doing a passage on true false not given questions. You'll do some answer and then we'll review them and explain them and we'll discuss. So you'll see whatever challenges you face, I'll explain to you and see how we can solve those problems, how to go about it. Okay, I'll give you some tips for those. There are keywords. You have to look for keywords in the sentence, question, and in the passage. Keep underlining the keywords. Then questioning the text. asking what who where why how when so these questions will help you to understand the question and understand where they talk about this in the passage lexical resource that means vocabulary you must know the meaning of the words the definition the explanation 
and if you don't understand the meaning of some difficult word during training you can refer to your dictionary look out for the meaning because if you um, if you don't understand the meaning of something you may miss out that answer because you have not understood the meaning so lexical resources knowledge is very good and necessary inference understanding from the context what are they talking about where is it so infer from the context words per minute do reading every day and check out how many words you read in a minute keep a timer and keep track of this so that it helps you to gain reading speed here again it shows a man you know searching for books in the library which are far beyond his reach he's still trying to reach there even though it's you know far he's kept a pile of books and climbing on top and reaching so that shows that uh, the the meaning uh, what we can understand from this is even if it's difficult to find something do it even if it's painful take a little trouble and do it because reading helps you reading helps you in terms of uh, understanding helps you in comprehension you learn new words meanings you learn spellings when you look and read you learn the uh, sentence formations uh, you learn punctuation so you learn so many things by reading and you gain speed as you keep reading every day make it a habit you'll see that your speed will improve from day to day you'll see over a week if you keep a timer which is going to uh, i'm tell you i'll tell you about the timer here how to read so you keep a timer and read every day you'll see that your speed is in increasing as the day goes by and look for sight words sight words are the important words uh, also listening to uh, listening to talks also helps you in terms of comprehension and understanding the last point here says reading fluency with a progress meter so your progress meter shows as you read every day that your speed is increasing here keep a timer every day and read a similar length of uh, passage suppose today i take a passage of two paragraphs keep a timer the two paragraphs and note down in your diary how many minutes you took then the next next day take another text with a similar length not the same passage take something new read that note how much time you take every day some take some new document check take some new passages and read of a similar length and note down the time you will see by the end of the week that your speed has improved that you have taken lesser time to complete the similar length of passage by the end of the week so this helps you a lot to monitor your progress using a timer and a um, progress meter monitor which monitors your progress